Well, you couldn't find a nicer night to watch Cardinal baseball in downtown St. Louis Bush Stadium. The Cardinals and the Padres. The Cardinals, well, you know, they've already run away with the Central Division in the National League. That much we can admit. Will Tony admit it? The answer is no. What do he and the Cardinals have to look forward to in the final month of this season? The Cardinals are a little different, different situation. We play ourselves in a good advantage here. So with 20 games at the end of the season, we want to end up with our key guys fresh, healthy, and sharp. And that means we'll probably bring up a couple extra guys to accomplish that. Tony LaRussa, now Joe Buck, and Al Roboski with you. And Al, it's always a good sign when you can line up your playoff rotation on the 1st of September. <laughs> and that's basically what can happen from here on out. It is, but you know Tony's not going to relax. This team is not going to relax because it would be a travesty if they just got to postseason and couldn't go very far. It, this team is capable of winning at all. And I think that's a good point. You have to start gearing up now for that October push. You have to get everybody healthy, rested, ready to go. If you look at the schedule coming up in our Ford dealers key matchup, how odd is it that as we start basically the final month of the season, the Cardinals are dealing with the Padres and the Dodgers for the first time all year. And these are two clubs that they could, one could be the winner, one could be a wild card winner. So these are important games matching up head to head. And of course, uh, you know, the Chicago Cubs are going to be watching these games very closely and wondering if the Cardinals are laying down. And Tony Russo's clubs will not lay down. So you, you there are no conspiracy theories whatsoever. <laughs> the Cardinals don't want the Cubs in the postseason. Therefore, they'll just roll over and well, lose these three. We could games. guarantee they're going to win. You wouldn't mind seeing them. OK, there you have it. So the Cardinals have a lot to say as to who will win in the wild card race. That includes the Padres. And we'll look at them with Dan McLaughlin when we come back. Cardinals baseball rolls on on FSN Midwest to look at the Cardinals Hall of Fame and the Cardinals will welcome the National League West to town the San Diego Padres tonight and the Dodgers over the weekend a very important game for both these teams as the Cardinals are trying to reduce that magic number and of course the San Diego Padres thanks to the wild card they have a shot to get into postseason play a team you haven't seen much of and a player that you probably don't know is doing very, very well. And that is Mark Loretta. This is our Bank of America higher standard. Leads the National League with 176 hits. You see the sack flies and the average at second best right now. He picked up hit number 1,000 of his career, and he was an all-star this year as well. Mark Loretta, our Bank of America higher standard. For the Cardinals, it'll be Woody Williams on the mound tonight, and Woody is perfect against his former team. He's 3-0. We head to a timeout. It's the Cardinals and the Padres in game one. Coming up next. Williams is on the mound. He's the Cardinals half of the advanced auto parts pitching matchup. He is trying to get into double digits out. He's the only one of the starters that's not in double digits. Matter of fact, everybody else got at least 12 wins. But Woody 3-0 against his former team. Breaking ball specialist up and down, in and out. And it's time for his victory. Renteria. Wow, what a play. Hot shot. Renteria. One hopper. Settles. Long throw. You bet. Little chopper up the middle. Renteria. Good play. What a play. Edgar Renteria is highlighted tonight. We go around the horn. It's brought to you by Auto Tire. Yeah. I feel like I'm right in the middle of the dance floor. Trying to not look like I can't dance. Sanders, Edmonds, and Walker in the outfield, and no surprises on the infield. Womack is at second base. The catcher is Matheny, and the manager is Tony LaRusso, who was getting an earful from a guy named Mark McGuire before tonight's game. Mark was in there to rough up his old manager, give him trouble left and right. Say, how can you still be nervous? You're 14 and a half games in first place. That's just Tony La Russa, and he knows that better than anybody. The lineup for the Padres has Freddie Guzman leading off and Loretta, Giles, Phil Nevin, Klesko, Sean Burroughs, Khalil Green, who's an outstanding rookie, Ramon Hernandez, and Brian Lawrence, a right-hander. A 13-game winner is pitching tonight for San Diego, and those are absolutely ridiculous-looking uniforms. Do you like that color? Uh, yes, I like uh, Walt Jockety's. Uh, no, that. Oh, that, that color. San Diego well it's better than their the Friars uniforms of That's years ago sure. but there are a lot of things that are better than that <laughs> yes they are so they've gone to a new kind of gold futuristic color this is a very good San Diego ball club 
not a lot of stars on it, but they've got a lot of good players. Freddie Guzman is hitting only 211, and against Woody Williams, he leans back from a ball. The San Diego Padres start the evening looking up at the Chicago Cubs in the wild card race, but only by a half game. And they are, whether they want to admit it or not, looking up at the scoreboard and realizing that Montreal leads four to nothing behind Levon Hernandez against Mark Fryer, who's just been average at best for Chicago in the second half. They're through three innings. And the Padres with the right combination could be on top in the wild card race at the end of the night. Bruce Bochy is an outstanding manager. He hasn't always had the talent, but he is a good manager for this club. There's a strike, and it's two and two. Woody Williams facing his former team, and of course, uh, there's only a couple guys left when he last was pitched for them. A 2-2 pitch, got him on the inside corner. Guzman gave up on it, it came back over the corner. And Woody Williams starts the night with a strikeout. Woody is coming off a no decision with a team win six innings. His last time out at Cincinnati. Sinking action on this ball, starts inside, the hitter gives up on it, and then it tails into the strike zone. So a very good start for Woody Williams. And when he gets those borderline pitches, he usually has a very, very good night. Bill Miller is the home foot umpire in charge of figuring out if their balls and strikes. That should be two up, two down. Womack, two up. The San Diego team now gets into a spot in their lineup where they're very good, and they go left, right, left with Giles, Nevin, Klesko. And Burroughs, at least with his average, is at a much better year this year than he did a year ago. Well, but you can also talk about uh, Loretta, who's He's having a phenomenal year. They just popped up to second base, but Bruce Bochy will send these guys up here. He's got a little more thump in their in their lineup. This is the second best road team to the Cardinals in the National League. The problem is in their new home ballpark, they're not winning. They're a 500 team. Yeah, 500. Psyched out by the dimensions of their new Petco Field. As a lot of the hitters just say, they crush a ball and it ends up in an outfielder's glove. Guy can hit him a long way, as you know. Long time with the Pirates, Brian Giles. It's two and zero. Oh. Of course, that was a very good tr trade for both clubs. Padres happy to get Giles, a power hitter, and Pittsburgh thrilled to have Jason Bay and also Perez. Here's a two zero. -oh. That's going to slice foul down the left field line and go out of play. Two one. Cardinal fans may be surprised to hear that. The Padres on the road actually average a, a tenth of a, a run more than the Cardinals do. Which is saying a lot. They're saying year. a lot. They're about, I think it's 5.6 to 5.5 road uh, average, run scored. And it's nearly two points higher than their home average. On two and one, that's high three and one. The Padres, just to talk about the power in their home park, have hit a combined total of 105 home runs on the season. The Cardinals, on the other hand, have hit 174. That's a little pop up, and it should be a good first inning for Woody Williams. Edmonds is there, and that's a perfect first for the Cardinal right-hander. He has been winning, looking for number 10 tonight. Cards come to bat. It's the right-hander, and a 13-game winner does not throw hard, is on the mound tonight for the San Diego Padres. That's it, Joe. He's a finesse pitcher. He's brave. He's not afraid to face anybody, and he's what hitters will call a comfortable 0 for 4. They're going back to the dugout. doing it over and over and over and over again. The Cardinals just keep on hitting, keep on winning. Tony Womack is back up over 300 at 304, and he looks at a ball down and away. It'll be Womack, Walker, and Pools, Roland Edmonds, Renteria, and Sanders, Matheny, and Woody. One ball, one strike. Front shoulder, hold that in. Don't let it fly open on this soft tosser. One ball, two strikes. It's not obviously exactly like it but it's almost like facing a knuckleball. 
that little bit and you can see why left handed batters do have a better advantage against him. As as he throws out there from the side they get a unobstructed view of the release point and can follow the ball in if they patient. And that's a nice piece of hitting left field base hit Womack is on. Not only can you win 13 games if you're Brian Lawrence throwing maybe mid 80s tops but you can have an ERA of 3.65 which in today's world is a solid earned run average. The defense for the San Diego Padres is Phil Nevin holds against the runner Womack as Klesko in left Guzman in center Giles in right Burroughs Green Loretta and Nevin with Hernandez the catcher for Lawrence. Here's Walker. Ought to be very familiar with Lawrence after their battles in the NL West. A bit of a tailspin for Larry Walker but that won't last long. The 0 1. And why not? Two on, nobody out. If you're going to get hit, <laughs> try an 80 mile an hour pitch from Lawrence. Not to say that doesn't hurt, but it's not Kerry Wood throwing one that just keeps burrowing into your ribs. And it's two on with nobody out for Albert. Albert was sitting there watching game tape of Lawrence before tonight's game, and he said, how would you hit this guy? I said, you're asking me? I'd have no chance. I couldn't hit in high school. I said, go to right. I said, no, I'm not going to go to right. I said, go pull him. No. Nope. I said, center? Yep. So let's see. Well, it's it's the soundest approach. Even if you just think if you're fooled a little bit, you're out in front, then you've got all of left field to play with. If you're a little bit tardy on a ball, you got all right field. So it's the best approach up the middle. Two on, nobody out. And that's the third high hop for the third baseman Burroughs a double play 5 3. 79 mile an hour pitch and it's a runner at second two out for Scott Rowland. That's what we're talking about. He's out in front so he hit the ball to third baseman. Two very young players on the left side of the infield behind Lawrence. Now you've got this shortstop Khalil Green who Makes a highlight play night after night. Guy who's hitting 272, a young side, young left side of this infield with Burroughs at third base made that play. They've got the cornerstones and the foundation for a very solid team for a long time in San Diego. There's a strike to Roland. You know, Joe, our good friend uh, Ted Simmons, farm director for the Padres, and remember Jason Bay. And the Pirates was part of the Giles deal. And I said, who is the National League Rookie of the Year? Green or Bay? Pick off play at second and Walker gets back. And he had a very interesting answer. He said, both of them are surprising to me. He said, we knew that Green was going to hit. He's played better defensively than we ever envisioned. And Jason Bay has shocked us how well he is has uh, hit. We thought he was a better defensive player, but he said because Green plays the the more outstanding position of shortstop, I give him the nod, the tougher position. Here comes a one-one, two and one. Last year, Dontrell Willis was the National League's Rookie of the Year. And he has had a mediocre season. Shortstop Baroa for the Kansas City Royals was sent down to double A. Yeah. He won in the AL. But Sednik has had a little bit of a slump, still stealing bases, but not as terrific of a player as he was last year. How about a hit on three and one? How about a perfect pitch over the outside corner, full count? Talk about putting it in a good spot when Roland was ready to jump out of his shoes. Well, that's what they said. He's brave. He's not afraid to throw strikes. He'll challenge hitters, even though he he has less than outstanding stuff. He knows how to pitch. Walker at second, two out, three two. Got him on the inside corner. Cardinals put their first two on, and Roland has a discussion and now is putting up a. 
protest with a home plate umpire. We go back to strike two. This one on the outside corner, and Roland's argument, I'm sure, is how big is this plate? Gave him the outside, now the inside. The inning is over, no score. Correct moment, the quote of the day, they are very beatable, said David Wells about the Cardinals to the San Diego Union Tribune. And knowing David Wells, like we all do, I'm sure after saying that, and that made it into the papers, David Wells lost a lot of sleep <laughs> worrying about that. Guy who in his own book said things that he would later regret while pitching for the Yankees. That's a trouble shot down the right field line. Pujols, wow. Albert Pujols, Al Raboski just made a phenomenal catch. I'm telling you, the more you see him, the more I'm hearing other people agree with me that at some point he's going to win a gold glove and then he's going to win a few more. But he has very soft hands. He's an aggressive type player. He'll go back on balls. He's not going to uh, worry about tippy toeing out there and worrying about a fielder coming in his way. And you see Ted Simmons and Kevin Towers is the general manager of the Padres. Now you see Ted. Seen his golf game yet? Oh, yeah. Let's go into left field. A little slicer out to Sanders. Two out. Ted Simmons really seriously started playing golf what eight years ago oh, I don't even think it was that long but maybe whatever eight, it is yeah. he's a low single-digit handicapper and a guy who yeah, I'm sure I mean, you played with him and I've only known him as a as more of a, an older guy and after the fact with his playing days but I mean you're looking at a guy who you could make a very strong case to be in baseball's Hall of Fame is a great athlete a tremendous baseball man and such a vital part of the Padres success right now scouting for them. Let me tell you that Ted Simmons was as pure a hitter as anybody in in baseball in his era. There were people that criticized his catching ability but as a pitcher if the game was on the line I wanted Ted Simmons back behind the plate and maybe he did have certain deficiencies but I know his bat was going to win the game for me. Here's a 1 1 pitch with two out, nobody on. Burroughs rolls it over to first. Woody's got to get there. Womack makes a nice play. And Williams, so far, so good. Six up, six down. 4 1 on that foot out. Cards coming up, no score. Come or call 421 3060 for tickets. For more information, Ryan Lawrence got into and out of trouble in the first, and Edmonds shows Bunt takes a ball. How about it? Jimmy's numbers. They've been piling up of late. Oh. 36 home runs, 95 RBIs, and his average up to 306. He has been phenomenal. One ball, one strike from Lawrence. Awful interesting what's happening in the American League East. If you haven't paid attention, pay attention to that. One to nothing, Cardinals on a home run by Edmonds, number 37. Edmonds before the game was taking extra batting practice under the watchful eye of Mark McGuire who typically watches from California on television and gives Edmonds tips. McGuire is here. He and Edmonds talked about his stroke before the game and I'll be darned he hits a home run his first time up. Sometimes a great hitter can make a suggestion or two or just hearing it from another voice puts it in practice. And I know Jim on the road trip took a lot of extra bait, uh, batting practice and it paid off and it is still amazing the year he's had Renneria is on with a base hit just to finish about the AL East the Boston Red Sox are winning behind Schilling tonight five to nothing in a race that looked absolutely over at the All-Star break the Red Sox at the end of the night if they hang on will be three and a half games out of first place with more head to head action coming up with the Yankees this season. The Yankees are getting pasted nine to nothing by the Indians at Yankee Stadium tonight. That is unbelievable what's going on there and the Yankees have to wonder if they're going to even make the postseason. And as you said there's not a lot of help and I'm not sure how many other teams are willing to help them. There's a ball low and away to Reggie Sanders. Meanwhile, the Cardinals are running away and continuing to run away with the NL Central, and they will 
have Rick Ankeel back here tomorrow. He was doing it at 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's fair. Run, Edgar. Renneria will dig for third. Plesko has trouble with it, and Renteria is going to come all the way around and score. 2-0. Cardinals break through. We go back to the Edmonds pitch that he jacked out into right. Well, remember you're talking about coming from a left-hander. There's no obstruction of the release point. So he sees the ball, doesn't get in the location he wants. Now Sanders gets a ball sitting right there, kind of spitting on the tee. There was no doubt in my mind that they were going to hold him at third base. And then when Klesko had a little trouble with the carom down in the corner, that's when Okendo, with nobody out, said, come on home. Two runs on four hits, still nobody out. Mike Matheny trying to knock in a run or get the runner over to third. You can do that with Williams coming up next. As he showed, Bunt took a ball. Mike is driven in 38. And you see his career numbers against the Padres. That's surprising. Well, the interesting thing is this very unselfish team. They're more than willing to drop down a bunt to advance a guy. Looked like he was trying to go to right. One yeah. ball, one strike. I think the first time he was thinking about dropping a bunt down on his own. But now he's back to situational hitting. Thinking if he can hit the ball the right side, maybe it'll go through and and Sanders can score. But at the very least, he advances him to third with only one out. Give yourself up for the betterment of the team. And that's a guy, Matheny, who's going into a walk here. That's back to the pitcher, Lawrence. He will not advance the runner. And throw to first is wide, but out is Matheny. One out. Chipper Jones, an interesting little note. Remember all the jeers that he got at Chase Stadium in his MVP yeah, season? His, his son, right? Named his son Shea. Hey. <laughs> he hit his first home run there, is not because of the jeers. They'll love him up there now. So with the Cardinals up 2 0, Jim Edmonds, who was talking about his stroke before the game, is talking about it with Scott Rowland during the game. And now with the runner at second, one out, here's Woody. And there's strike one. Williams trying to hold up, could not. I think it could be a real exciting moment, Al Roboski, and I really expect one. When Rick Ankeel steps back on that field and gets in the middle of that diamond in front of these home fans and does what he's done in the minor leagues getting back to this point pitched brilliantly and he can carry that over to the next level which I expect he will this will have an emotional moment here at Bush Stadium in the next couple of days and I, I think what people got to realize too is prior to the Tommy John surgery they had stopped talking about control Williams grounds to short for Khalil Green two up. The runner at second, two out. It's up to Womack. College football Saturday returns to FSN on Labor Day weekend. Beginning with a showdown between bitter and state rivals. Colorado takes on Colorado State. Then on Sunday, it's a special edition of College Football Saturday. Presented by Kiyosara. Fresno State looks to upset a Washington team that's trying to be back among the Pac-10 elite. Begins on Saturday at 6.30 Central, only on FSN Midwest. Olmack has knocked in 34 runs and takes a strike. But Rick Ankeel's control problems were really a thing of the past. It was his elbow that was affected. Then they surgically repaired that. We know if, as they play him around the opposite field, Olmack. As he went up the ladder, he got better at every every level. I mean, his last start, he hardly threw. Forget the other stuff. 53 pitches. But Six innings, one unearned run. About 80, 85 percent of the pitches were strikes. Yeah, I, I mean it was, it was 42 out of 53, some ridiculous. A 1-1. One, one. Walmack dumps another one into left field. Will they test Klesko? They hold the runner late, and it's a good thing they did. Strong throw by Klesko as Sanders holds it third, first and third, two out. Tony Walmack is so good at going to the ops field. Just hitting that little line drive that hits the outfield grass, but it's usually not deep. They defend him that way, and Klesko, who over the time has made himself a decent outfielder, 
And you see Reggie. Sees the ball goes through. He's running hard, looking back, slowing himself down, and then he got the stop sign from Kendo. But as long as an outfielder is aggressive, comes up and fires the ball in, you've got to stop the run. Walker pops it foul left side, and it's playable for Burroughs. The inning is over. The Cardinals get two runs in the inning, and they do so on four hits. They leave a couple, and after two behind Woody Williams, lead two zips in the 1918 World Series, and that's the that's where the curse supposedly started. That's the last World Championship for the Red Sox, and then first year was 1920 for Babe Ruth with the New York Yankees, and the curse, and no more rings or trophies to celebrate in Boston. One ball, one strike. There's our good buddy, David Pratt, one of the Cardinal owners, and it's uh, his birthday today. So happy birthday, Mr. Pratt. I didn't realize that, and he doesn't realize that he shares a birthday with our good friend Chachi Brennan. Happy birthday to Chachi, who is, I'm sure, at the ballpark tonight. That's Khalil Green, the rookie, hitting it to deep left field and off the wall. Green will dig into second with the leadoff double. That ball looked like it would shoot out of here. Reggie Sanders didn't give up on it and played it very well off the wall. Trying to deke the runner, but he all might have deked himself thinking it was a little higher, but he plays the carom perfectly. Bare hands it from the warning track and an accurate throw in. And Green with the play in front of him about halfway, he realized he was going to have to turn it on a little bit, come up and make a head first slide to the inside as the throw was a little bit to the outfield side. Ramon Hernandez now with a runner at second, nobody out, and the pitcher coming up next. Decent numbers for Hernandez, a 273 hitter. Another victim. Of Oakland's payroll is Hernandez. Remember, he was an all-star for oh, yeah. the A's, and yet he was going to have to go to arbitration, so they had to get rid of him. The A's knew that they, or the Padres knew the A's like Katze, and they were able to make a deal as the Padres have a whole bunch of young outfielders. And Katze's been a nice addition sure. to the Oakland A's, and the A's have Damian Miller doing their catching. I get word now from our spies in the streets that Chachi Brennan is celebrating with friends at Schneidhorst's. Oh. So there you go. She's taking the night off in the ballpark tonight. Here's a 2-0. Popped into right. That'll be played by Walker. It'll get green over to third. And one out. So Hernandez advances the runner, but now with a pitcher coming up. We'll see if the San Diego right-hander can help his cause here in the third. Lawrence Buck 15 and a couple RBIs but see if they can cut the lead in half. Almost look at Woody looking up at the uh, batting average this Lawrence's average up on the scoreboard saying hmm how do I want to attack it six out of 52. <laughs> What's the best way to get a guy who's six out of 52 at the plate out. They come in on the infield and Williams steps off. Could be a little bit of a decoy to see if the hitter gives away something. Remember Guzman, the on deck hitter. Their leadoff guy is a very young player that has phenomenal speed, but probably a little bit overexposed at the major league level right now. They just needed his good uh, ability to play center field. I think it'll be interesting to see how Woody Williams tries yeah. to get Lawrence out. As he just came right over the top with a good curveball for strike one. A lot of people believe that the curveball is the easiest pitch to bunt if you have good technique. If you stab at the ball, you don't do things properly. And now Lawrence wants to talk to Rob Piccolo, the third base coach, and figure out what are, what have you been trying to tell me? It oh, is kid. August 31st <laughs> and having trouble with the signs. Hey, I'm, I'm a 13 game winner. I've got my career high in wins. But uh, what was that sign again? There are some in the game who believe that those little meetings right there should not be allowed. If you can't get the signs. You're on your own. You can't go down and talk to the coach. That's a fastball for ball one. I'm 
Cardinals got very good interior defense and when you got Woody Williams on the mound it's like a fifth infielder. Runner at third one out two nothing Cardinals in the third. It's a squeeze coming. And that was the sign to just stand there and hold it. And you know you. Woody standing there but I also saw green and young guy out of third base was standing so erect he definitely wasn't giving anything away. Oh, good pitch it ties up more on strike two and the chances for the squeezed window I, I guarantee that's a good point out because I guarantee a lot of people on the Cardinal bench are looking at Khalil Green to see if he'll give anything away as much as they're looking at Pichelo the third base coach. Back curve to the curveball. A one two. Lawrence gets to do it again. Had him reaching for it. And remember, Woody, right now that he's got the two strikes, wants the strikeout or the pop up on the infield. Got the infield playing in, so they're not at their normal depth on a, every routine fly ball or a pop up. On one and two. That is out number two as Matheny gives a look fires down two out now you got a guy hitting 210 coming up looking for a two out RBI hit. And Woody Williams knew how to go about getting Brian Lawrence out he started with a curveball and he ended with one. Not only a curveball but a good one down and away with a 12 to 6 action but off the plate. You hear the home plate umpire Bill Miller say to Freddie Guzman, All right, I need you. Get up here. You've wasted enough time. Let your pitcher go down and in the dugout and sit. He is looking for a two out hit. Guzman was leading the Pacific Coast League in, in steals. He had over 40 steals when he was at the point of recall. He could play good, solid center field. That's ball one. They think at some time he will develop, but probably right now, be not quite ready for the big leagues. But they didn't have a, a true center fielder. And they're really looking for a leadoff hitter. They'd love it if Guzman was the guy. They were reports that they were really interested in Kenny Lofton of the New York Yankees, who's not doing anything for New York, but the Yankees wouldn't give him up. Yeah, and they had Jay Payton and asked if uh, they were disappointing him they said well that's not really fair because he wasn't a true center fielder on one and one that's why two balls and a strike with a very good hitter Loretta next Cardinals lead two nothing and Woody Williams is in the process of trying to pitch around a leadoff double by green on a ball that almost got out of the park he's a third with two down and Guzman to Womack Getting over. Good work by Woody Williams. He knows how to pitch, doesn't he? Two and a half innings complete. And the Cardinals lead it 2 0. Albert Pujols first up. He bounced into a double play his first time up, dealing with Lawrence, and he takes a strike. If not for the wild card in the National League, how many teams would have packed it in by now? You talk about something that's added a lot to the game. The National League, the Cubs would have packed it in the Astros would have packed it in the Marlins would have packed it in that's off the end of the bat and in front of Ryan Plesko for a leadoff hit for Pools. right now Al hard to believe but the Astros are only four out in the yeah. wild card the Cubs are leading the wild card San Diego's a half out and then you've got the Giants that are only a game out and Florida's still alive at four out. There's a lot of people believe that even without the wild card if you're within five games going into September you still have a legitimate shot to overtake the, the leader. Last two world champions have been wild card entries. That's easy in the right field for Giles. Rollins 0 for 2. See Albert there got a nice note from Jim Cook from Joplin Missouri and He's opened the new ballpark as space available for a future Albert Pujols statue. I mean, the size of Stan Musial. <laughs> for, Albert. It, for Albert, but he wants to make sure we all understand that he's he's waiting for about 20 years more of service. Yeah. Stan had a great golf tournament yesterday at Whitmore in the Bluffs. 
wonderful event. Anything that you put the name Stan Musial to is going to succeed. He has the Midas touch. One ball, no strikes. On Edmonds, who homered his first time up. One on, one out. 2-0. Oh. You see how Lawrence, as he delivers the ball away from his body to a left-handed hitter, they get a real good look at the release point, and they hit considerably higher than right-handers. He doesn't make good location, and you see that release point follow it. 3-0, and oh, Lawrence wanted that pitch, didn't get it. One team after another finding out just how good this Cardinal club is. The Padres will get a taste of that. Six games in the next week and a half. That makes it two on with one out. That's the first walk by Lawrence. Cardinals care is looking for volunteers to Rome Bush Stadium during the annual jerseys off our backs day on Sunday September 5th. That's this Sunday all fans at the game will have the opportunity to donate one dollar for scratch off raffle tickets for the chance to win an autographed game used Cardinal jersey. Volunteers are needed from 10 a.m. through the seventh inning if you want to volunteer 516-0132. Or email at volunteers at stlcardinals.com. All one to Renteria. And is out to talk to his young pitcher. He's already a career high in wins this season. Got a nice note from Pam Gray. We're a little late in this delivering this birthday wish. And it's happy 23rd birthday to her son Dustin Gray at Cabot, Arkansas. So happy birthday, Dustin. Maybe Edgar will give you a present. One ball, one strike. The 1-1. One, one. Opposite field, base hit. Pujols will hold at third. Giles comes up throwing, and it's bases loaded, one out. And now, every time you look at Albert Pujols go around the third base bag, you feel like there's about a 60% chance he's going to run through the stop sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Already the seventh hit, it's two of them by by Renteria and here's what you're talking about. He is very aggressive at everything he does. But you know you've got to think that you're going to score on every base hit so you can be in position to score. And then your third base coach reacts to the defense. If they come up firing you hold them up. Give it give Reggie a shot. Yeah the thing is with this lineup it's not like you have yeah. two cracks or three cracks at a pitcher and that's it. Danger up and down. Sanders already has a double, and he was looking for a grand slam. Strike one. How about Reggie? Set a little history over the weekend. 20 homers. But the first player in Major League history to do it for six different teams. What is it? Todd Zeal's hit 10 or more for, what, 10 teams or something? 10 or 11? Something like that. Woody is hoping for more breathing room. He's about to deal with the heart of the San Diego lineup in the fourth. Reggie could really help. Sanders has driven in 59. At the end of this season, he figures to have very good numbers, production-wise. That's just inside a ball and a strike. Pujol started this with a hit. Roland flied out. Edmonds walked. Renneria base hit. Edgar's two for two. You would figure this is the kind of guy that Sanders would handle. And you see, he, the guy that doesn't throw exceptionally hard. Two and one. And even though people reacted to that ball, thinking it's a little closer than it was, but he's the kind of guy that can pitch on both sides of plate up and down. But if he makes mistakes, he doesn't have the ability to throw it past someone.
Now the count's two and one, and Sanders takes ball three. And Lawrence is shaking his head after every pitch, having a tough time putting these pitches where he wants. A big key to the Cardinals' success is how they wear down pitchers. And as the game goes along, they, they make them throw a lot more pitches. They're usually behind the count because they're tentative facing such a good offense. Left side might end the inning. Burrows for one on to first double play. Cardinals with a golden opportunity to bust it open. Woody Williams, a little frustration there. He and the Cardinals lead only 30 with Cardinals tonight. Two runs on seven hits already. As we go to the fourth inning. And the Cardinals also received a walk and a hit batsman. However, they have hit into two double plays tonight. And stranded five. How about Loretta's season? That's ball one from Williams to a guy hitting 342. 176 hits. Good guy and somebody who was really going to be more of a bench player. And they can't get him out of the lineup. 2 and 0 the count. Remember, he was sort of a, a bench player with Milwaukee. That traded late one season to Houston, did pretty well, but then signed with these Padres and and he's made a name for himself. Here's a 2-0. Two and one. Speaking of Houston, they lead four to nothing at Cincinnati. And they may only be three on the wild card at the end of the night. Here's a 2-1. That's in the air to left center field. Sanders going to get it. He will watch it bounce off the base of the wall. For the second inning in a row, it's a leadoff double for the Padres. Reyes already had a career high in home runs. Second in the batting title, I believe. Just a solid, his 43rd double this season. Career high in home runs, so just having a breakout season. Ball up, out over the plate, and he gave it a ride. Always known as a pretty good hitter, but now he's making a definite statement. Reggie had a little trouble out there, but no further advancement. Now it's Giles with a runner at second, nobody out. Cardinals modify their shift a little. With Renneria on the left side of the bag as you look at it. And Giles was up there to hammer. He's hit 18 home runs, driven in 77. Giles with that open stance. Walks right into the pitch. One ball, one strike. He's hustling back there, trying to make sure that runner doesn't advance. Cardinals already having an opportunity to blow this thing open. Missed on it. Now the Padres have the tying run at the plate. Nobody out here in the fourth. How about that? You see the little flick from that's a, a plan where Matheny will watch the shortstop and see when he sneaks in behind, then he flicked his his wrist to uh, Woody Williams signify that's when you spin and throw to the second base. Got a big pickoff over the weekend. With Marquis on the mound. That's on the outside corner. And so much of that credit was to Renteria who was the one that realized that they could put that pickoff play on and he could sneak in behind the base runner Makoviak. Well, if ever there's a time to do it, it would be in this type situation where Renneri is right behind the bag anyway. Sure. Here's a 1-2. Giles just hammers it over to the first baseman Pujols. Tomahawks it and one out in the inning. Over to third goes Loretta. How about that? Getting on top of that pitch. <laughs> no, no other description other than Tomahawk. Loretta doubled on a chest high fastball from Williams and now Giles got on top of one putting Loretta at third with one out. It's not something you recommend to this part of the order to getting the balls up over the middle of the plate. Nevin now. 
strike one. Nevin's one of those guys I think that has allowed his home ballpark to psych himself out and very frustrated that balls he thought he crushed to end up on the warning track and his average much much better and production numbers much greater on the road. In fact at one point gestured up to the press box right. after hitting a ball he thought should have been out it stayed in the park showing his frustration about their new home stadium in San Diego. That's fouled behind the plate. Out of play strike two. Nevin is a guy who we all remember was somebody who basically talked and acted his way out of the Houston Astros organization when he was rude and childish around Bob Watson the situation and I think they had had enough of him to his credit he has really worked his way into becoming a premier power and RBI man in this league. I remember he was third baseman catcher a little bit but came out of Cal State Fullerton. Thought he had all the answers kind of disrespectful to some of the baseball people including his own general manager. But I think when it's all said and done that he he has matured from those days and now has become pretty solid. Here's a 2 2. Nevin strikes out two out and Woody Williams has done his best pitching tonight with a guy standing over at third. Third strikeout for Woody Williams and not one bigger than that so far. Here's Zaretta where you see the ball up out over the plate. Now you'll see Giles Tomahawk getting on top of ball but the strikeout and Woody gets here when he's got a runner at third base bottom falling out of this one and and Nevin going right over the top of it. There are times when you need a strikeout and that was one of them. Now it's Klesko. Another one up. Ball one. Klesko probably the biggest disappointment for Kansas for San Diego. They're paying him a lot of money to be hitting only six home runs. Still a threat. Long time Atlanta Brave. Ooh. One ball one strike. But that that was Joaquin empty. Andujar S. <laughs> right. Usually when you swing that hard, you come up empty. Two and one. After Klesko, it's Burroughs. Lesko trying to put the Padres on the board, trying to take advantage of that leadoff double by Loretta. Two and two. Went to St. Croix one time playing a charity golf tournament, and Lesko was there and took a surfboard. That's his gig in the <laughs> offseason. I know, but. What better place to play than San Diego? 2 2 pitch. Well, Woody tried to drill that inside corner and just missed full count. Woody well, doesn't like to lock or walk people, but he has a full count here, and he can really tantalize something off speed. Can he get Klesko up the middle? That cuts the lead in half. It's a two-to-one game on a base hit up the middle by Ryan Klesko. 53rd RBI for Klesko and got that breaking ball. Had good downward action, tried to get it out away from him, but he goes down and gets it. And with that shift on, he beats the shift. Here's Burroughs. Sean hitting 295, two homers, 41 RBIs. Takes a strike from Woody Williams. Sean, only two home runs, but you think as he gets older, he's only 23 years of age, he will probably develop into a 20, 25 home run guy. Walmack. Ball took a funny hop. It almost looked like it hit Klesko, but it evidently got by him and then got behind Walmack. Two on, two out, and a hit by Burroughs. Well, he just showed you right there as he was going to his left, that ball took a funny hop and kicked back behind him. 
And I think he'd be even barehanded to slow it down. So you're running hard to get over there. He jams him here, hits the dirt, and then it went behind him. And scored a base hit. Just one of those odd bounces when it got under the dirt. So now here's a guy, Khalil Green, who has come up with some huge hits this year for San Diego. He's already doubled in this game, was left on. Two on, two out, strike one. They knew he was going to be a hitter also, but Ted Simmons was saying they were shocked at how well he's played defensively. 24 years old, won't turn 25 until the end of October. He waits for an 0-1. That's low, a ball and a strike. Green last year at Portland. Triple-A hit 288 with 10 home runs. Highest he's ever hit was at Lake Elsinore, hit 317, but he's only been in pro ball for two years. So he's come on quickly. On the inside corner, one and two. San Diego Padres, you, you know, they struggled last season, but going into this year, they felt that they were going to be a contending team. It might have even surprise themselves how quickly they have arrived. Matheny keeps it at home plate. Two and two. And how many times do you have a team that's going into a new ballpark, whether it's Cincinnati or Pittsburgh or Houston, whatever, that you hear their big plan is to get everything geared up for that first year in the new park, and then they are awful. And in San Diego, to their credit, Give credit to Bruce Bochy and Kevin Towers. Got it all geared up for this year, and here they are contending. The 2 2 pitch on the outside corner, and a long fourth inning is finally over. Woody Williams gives up his first run of the night. The Padres have now stranded three, and we have played three and a half. A hit by Klesko makes it two to one, Cardinals, as we go to the bottom. Matheny strike one breaking ball from Brian Lawrence bottom of the fourth two to one the Cardinals on top it'll be Matheny and Woody Williams and then Tony Womack if anybody gets on Larry Walker first of a three game set with the Padres 0 one pitch way outside Matheny couldn't lay off it's 0 and 2 Lawrence can cross fire to that down and away against these right handed batters with a breaking ball and do the same with a fastball. Drops down sidearm and says if he went after the last one maybe he'll go after this one. It's ball one. Part of the key to pitching is throw enough pitches inside so you can get them out of way but just keep on trying to expand the zone. Now they go inside and Matheny trying to dump one into right center field. Nice diving catch by Guzman. And this great Cardinal crowd appreciates that effort. That was pretty to watch. It sure was. He made up a lot of ground. He had a great jump on the ball, and that's why that young man is playing. He's got great speed, utilizes it here with great concentration, dives, lays out, and there's no way that Peyton or one of the other outfielders could have made that play. And that's what he's here is for his defense, and they think eventually he'll become a pretty solid leadoff man. Woody Williams takes a strike. The Cardinals had two on with nobody out in the first. A double play ball followed. They got no runs in the first inning. Then in the second, got their two runs on four hits. And in the third, had the bases loaded one out and a 3-1 count on Sanders and could not score as Williams has a quick at bat. And that's two out here in the fourth inning. Second strikeout for Lawrence. What's on tap is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Tomorrow night Adam Eaton and Chris Carpenter on the air at 630 with Cardinals tonight. Your name's Joan Million and you're having a birthday today. Happy birthday. A nice note from your sister Jean. So happy birthday Joan.
There's a strike to Womack. Padres in the fifth will have Hernandez, Lawrence, and Guzman. Another try to the left side. This time Womack is retired for the first time tonight. Two out of three. Lawrence, a quick inning. Fifth now. Two to one, Ramona Hernandez. Then the pitcher, Lawrence. Then Freddie Guzman. Two to one, Cardinals. Fifth inning. The Cards will have their big bats. In the bottom of this fifth, that strike one, if not out, number one. Can anybody get there? Will it stay in play? What a catch by Reggie Sanders. One out. Right along the railing, one down here in the fifth. Even Tony applauds that effort. Well, he stayed with it. You're kind of tippy-toeing down there. You're also hoping that no fans reach over, but another great tribute to the Cardinal fans that let the players play the game. Look at the guys pull themselves their gloves back, whether Reggie says something or not, but look at the last second, everybody, particularly this, this one gentleman right here, Watch, watch what he does. See him pull his hands back in there, allowing the players to have an opportunity. How good is that? I, Reggie might have called him off. Yeah, well, I thought he might have done it, but... And, and you know, you, you can never fault fans for reaching over. Lawrence going into right center field. Larry Walker, can he get there? Nice yeah. catch. Woo. He was right down the right field line and had to go a mile to get that. Did you notice how he ran under control? Seven-time Gold Glove winner, didn't panic, didn't try and do too much on it, just kind of glided back and made up some distance and then reach up and make the play. Made it look rel relatively easy. So those two nice plays that bail out a pitcher. So Reggie Sanders made a play down the left field line. Larry Walker makes a play in the alley in right center, and it means that He's next next up is Jim Edmonds. Bill Isom came up with that line, one of our camera operators. I can't take credit for all this gold. There's strike one from Woody Williams to Freddie Guzman. There's strike two. Freddie is 0 for 2. And with two out, nobody on. Guzman wouldn't chase it. The Yankees are losing at home 16 to nothing to wow. the Indians. Is that oh. unbelievable? At home, too. At home. Oh. And everybody's Wonder if George is at the stadium. They, they, they hope he's at home in Tampa. Breaking ball gets Guzman and a perfect quick inning. Thanks to some defensive help. From his corner outfielders for Woody Williams, Walker, Pujols, Roland, coming on Ford Taurus up to $5,000 cash back or 0% financing for 60 months. Qualified buyers only at your quality Ford stores. Your home run to Cardinal Baseball Fund. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Come on down to the stadium and join us. Walker, base hit. 80 mile an hour pitch from Lawrence and Larry Walker is on to start the fifth for the Cardinals. Pujols, Roland, Edmonds coming up. Ball was hit hard, but it looked like Nevin didn't have great range at all as that ball got by him. Larry just flipped those wrists and just like that, less than half a step, and it's by the first baseman, Phil Nevin. Almost like no rotation on the delivery. That's foul. Strike one to Albert. Larry was running on the pitch. He's 6-0 and in stolen bases this year in 4-0 as a Cardinal. Albert. Protecting the runner, reached out and got a little piece of it. Three twenty-four average, right at forty and one hundred. That looks so nice on the scoreboard, just nice and clean, forty, one hundred. But let's make it look filled with some more crooked numbers as Pujols takes a ball inside, one ball, one strike. He's already got his hundred runs scored, hundred RBIs again. Four years of 30 or more and two years at 40 home runs. A 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One oh, Mark Pryor, Mr. I don't like the Cardinals, is hoping that the Cardinals can bail 
Old number 22 and the Cubs out of trouble tonight as they are losing at Montreal five to nothing leading the wild card chase by a half game over the Padres. They gave up four in the first. Did Mr. Pryor. Here's a one two to Albert. Lawrence tries to change speeds work on both sides of the plate of these guys. Cardinals have banged out eight hits against him. But he's involved in a very close game as his defense turned a couple double plays. Albert checked it. He went awfully far, but the first base umpire, Brian Gorman, wants to see Albert swing it again. Two and two. Some of these right-handed batters must have a hard time picking up that that release point, particularly on the breaking ball down and away. A couple of them have gone after it. A couple of them have tried to stop it. Their swings. He set up inside on two and two, and Lawrence floats one over Walker's direction. Got him reaching for a slider out there. Now at least that last pitch looked like wanted to go in back to the slider away. The uh, two two. He checked it again. Three and two. That time it wasn't anywhere near as close. So it's a full count with Scott Rowland on deck. Lawrence has walked the tightrope all night. A lot of guys seems like now go inside a lot. When you have to throw a strike, and this is a dangerous pitch, that's where they're going to try. That's down into the corner, ripped. Walker will dig for third. Klesko has to go get it. And Larry Walker's coming all the way around to score. And nearly a wild throw at home. It's three to one. Hey, Walker knew exactly how much time he had, didn't he? He was timing it, looking over his shoulder. Klesko's had one kick back past him, and now this one stayed against the wall. We go pitch by pitch. Brought to you by Chevrolet. Remember, he was going on the first one. Then he came back. He's working on both sides of the plate. Fooling him on that slider a little bit. Tries it again. But there's where he has to throw a 3-2 pitch. That's a strike. And they kind of work inside your tendency to leave it in the inner half. Now watch Larry Walker here. Just kind of coasting, coasting. And he, I don't think he had any idea the throw was coming home. He would have looked awfully foolish if they would have tagged him out. Now rolling with a runner at second and nobody out takes a strike. One thing I noticed in that replay and I'm sure you've seen it on the road is Pujols is running a lot better than he oh, was three weeks ago. Absolutely. And one he doesn't want to come out of the lineup and two he's getting good treatment. That's just inside a ball and a strike. And all these guys even Scott Rowland it seems like his knee is functioning a lot better and not quite as sore as it was earlier. Right hander Blaine Neal is getting ready for the Padres in their bullpen. On the corner one and two. And Scott not happy with today's strike zone. Bank of America higher standards. National League rankings for the Cardinals. First 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 and batting average runs per game and ERA That's pretty good. Now they don't they they're not the lowest in defense but they may be its best there and we talked about that the other night because they get to so many balls because the infielders have so much range sometimes they get errors on wild throws that other infielders are watching ground balls head into the outfield here's a 2 2 Roland sticks the bat out and goes into the right field corner Merry go round keeps on spinning. Roland will dig for second. He's going to go to third with nobody out and make it. It's four to one. A single, a double, a triple in that order in this fifth. You know what Jim Edmonds is going to do? You know, complete the cycle. This is what this team does. It just wears you down. They already banged out ten hits. Scott Rowan is fourth football of the year. And look at pitch him away. Balls up a little bit. Just a really pretty swing. Just flick the wrist down in the right field corner. 
It was going to be a triple anyway, but when Giles missed the cutoff man, it assured it. Now the infield comes in for Edmonds. Why? <laughs> Nobody out in the inning. Rolling at third, and Edmonds is licking his chops and fouling one off to the left. Jim has homered, walked. He's hit 37 home runs now, driven at 96. Easy one out there with nobody out. Just inside, a ball and a strike, and I guarantee you Lawrence will tell you he hasn't gotten the calls that he needs to get the win. You can see Bill Miller, the home plate umpire, just staring in the Padres dugout as he heard a lot from the bench there. Here's a 1 1. 2 and 1. If this San Diego team is a potential playoff foe, the Cardinals are sending an early message in their first meeting against Bruce Bochy's team that they're as good as advertised. Two and two on Edmonds. See if Jim can deliver the run, or would it be up to Renteria? Cardinals lead by three, their biggest lead of the night. Edmonds way out in front of a ball in on his hands. Woody Williams thought he might have some breathing room last inning, didn't get it, but he's getting it here. And looking for his 10th win of the season. Here's a 2-2. Edmonds with a base hit through the drawn in infield, and it's 5-1 in the fifth. RBI number 97 for Edmonds. Still nobody out, and that might be it for Lawrence. Just keep on attacking and ball up, but Jim Edmonds, a high ball hitter, something he knew he could pull. And gets the benefit of the ball going through right side, picking up his second RBI of the night. Edgar's got a good night going. He's two for two, and Lawrence, even with a right-hander, Neal, ready to go out in the bullpen, is going to stay in. There's a strike. Cardinals offense tonight, box score, Womack two hits, Walker, base hit to start this inning, just scored a run, Pujols rolling, right on down the line. The 1 in the air to right for Giles. That is the first out of the inning. Reggie Sanders will back. You ever get tired of watching this night after No, night? it's, it's fun to see how relentless they are and how I mean they go up there and you can you can tell maybe that pitcher gets a little bit of them but they feel that they'll just wear down a pitcher especially with these pitch counts of today I mean, most starters can't can't survive six innings against them that's in the center field Sanders is two out of three Edmonds will hold it second with one out and that is going to be it for Lawrence. So with Matheny coming up, even though Matheny's 0 for 2 against Lawrence tonight, Lane Neal, a right-hander, is going to come out of the bullpen, and that is it for the San Diego starter. That's exactly right, Al. This team has been wearing out these starting pitchers, going after the middle relief of one team after another, and that's really where they do their damage. So Lawrence is the latest to run into this buzzsaw called the Cardinal lineup. He exits. Cardinals lead five. Welcome back. Call of the bullpen is brought to you by St. Louis Renaissance Grand Hotel. Lane Neal was acquired from Florida. He was uh, purchased by Portland, Oregon on June 12th. Through 27 games with, with Portland all in relief. Actually has 
right handed batters have hit for a higher average than left handers this year. Righty's at bat 280 against him. Lefty's at bat 239. There's the damage so far. Five runs on 12 hits. Not even through the fifth. Two on, one out. Matheny checks his swing on a ball down and away from Neal. Padres had a good member of their bullpen hit the disabled list. Jay Watasek threw a lot of innings for them, and they've been trying to add as the season has gone on. Rich Aurelia, who was cut loose by the Seattle Mariners, is part of this team, trying to add to their bench. And we are seeing a portion of this group for Bruce Bochy. He mixes a lot of pieces in and out day to day. Here's a 2-0. Matheny fouls it back toward us. Pretty strong coaching staff for Bruce Bochy. When you think about Davy Lopes, Tony Muser, a couple former managers on his staff. And the guy who has the highest lifetime average in the history of the New York Mets. Magadan, Dave Magadan, the hitting coach. That's a little wide, three and one. Looking down at Jose Okendo, who doesn't look his way, but flashes the signs out to Edmonds. Two on, one out, three balls and a strike, and Mike would like to add to that RBI total of 38. Full count. Oakland winning at Chicago, 6-1. Texas trailing in Minnesota 5-2, and Boston is beating up on Anaheim now, 10-1 behind Schilling. Here's a 3-2 pitch. The runners go. The pitch is ball four, and the bases are loaded. Takes a lot of concentration on the part of Matheny with the runners going in that spot to lay off a pitch that close and draw a walk. You, you like the aggressiveness of the Cardinals? They've already hit into two double plays today. You've got a guy that strikes out a lot, but put pressure on the defense. And good concentration, as you said, from Mike as he accepts a walk. And Woody can help himself. He has driven in only one all year. That is about to change. That's that's odd in itself. Strike one on a good fastball from Neal. 11 hits this year for Woody, one RBI. Cardinal hitters usually do help themselves, and Woody's one of the better ones. Base is loaded, one out, 0-1 pitch, 0-2. May not change here. Still bet on Woody. Kind of 94 mile an hour fastball, then like a cutter or slider swung up that was up in the zone. Is it going to be on 0-2? Two out. And it's up to Womack, who already has two hits tonight. I was talking about Woody's pitching. I was voting on it. I'm with you. I hear you. Cardinals have already stranded five. And the bases loaded two out here and asked for the third hit of the night from Womack. A lot of Cardinal fans were up in Pittsburgh, including Benjamin and, and uh, Joshua Richardson. Their mom and dad were at the game. They, those two kids were born at Scott Air Force Base. Dad's a big, big Cardinal fan. Mom saw her first game in Pittsburgh. They're from Hamilton, VA. That's ball one. They were told me they are big Tony Womack fans. Womack is driven in 34. One ball one strike. How many foul balls do you think Tony La Russa comes up with on his little perch down there at the end of the Cardinal dugout? Nine. I'd say he gets into double digits every year. Ball just finds him. Walmack to the second baseman, Loretta. Cardinals lead three. They've stranded eight, but they've scored five and lead by four as we go into the sixth inning behind Woody Williams. 
Big bats in the order for San Diego here in the sixth. Loretta, Giles, and Nevin. Anybody gets on Klesko as the Padre RBI tonight. Williams misses high with ball one. Mark Loretta took a high delivery and hammered a double into left center field. About Montreal adds on three more. Eight nothing after seven. But he talks about the great pitching of the Cubs in the postseason and getting into a short series. I keep talking about it, but Mark Pryor isn't close to what he was last year. He was at times unhittable. That's in the left center field off the bat of Loretta, who is now one for three. Wood has been okay. Zambrano is probably their best, but he got pounded the other day against Houston. Clement injured his neck yesterday. Guess you'd have to go back to Maddox and saying he's their most consistent. He's been pitching well. Picked to what, 302? Yeah, 302 or 303, he's right there. There's Chris Carpenter, tomorrow night starter. And there's a strike on the outside corner to Giles. These guys aren't as celebrated, but we'll take their numbers. One ball, one strike. How good was Chris Carpenter his last time out? One to nothing loser against Cincinnati, struck out 11. I mean, that was probably the best game we've seen all season long, pitched by both pitch starters. Harang was outstanding, Carpenter was too. Change up. And Giles hits a home run into right field, his 19th of the year. First pitch change up to Casey is what did in Carpenter and these Padres, even though the you know the Cardinals have scored five, they haven't pulled away from the Padres yet. So it's a three run game. That's it here in the sixth inning. And Giles is knocking on the door of 20 with number 19. Not far enough in. And into the hands and out. And now with only one out, Nevin takes a ball. Phil struck out. His last time up with a runner at third and one down. 0 for 2 tonight. That's the left side and foul. Nevin is hitting 312, and this year is no different. Battling injuries since really the start of spring training as he takes the ball down and away, two and one. On two and one, Nevin hits it foul again. Go back to the home run, hit into right field, and this guy had a shot to come up with a souvenir. Was looking for some sort of consolation from his female friend, and she continued to laugh at him. In fact, still is. Nevin hits it in the air to left field, got under it, and Sanders will have it for the second out. We go back to the hot pitch of the game brought to you by Hardy's a borderline pitch to get green to end the long fourth inning for Williams. Good breaking ball if I remember right for a Hardy's hot pitch. It's freezing him down and away. That was his fourth strikeout. He's got one more since then. With two down here's Klesko and there's one. I can't imagine how Klesko would have a rib cage injury. No. <laughs> Surprised anything still attached in there. Swing in the hard. way he swings. Yeah. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. Ryan, kind of a free spirit that somewhat seems like he belongs in San Diego. Yeah. One and two was on the disabled list with a strained right oblique earlier in the season. As Al mentioned, surprising that he has only six home runs to this point. He's had 321 at bats. When he connects, they go a long way. The one-two pitch. 
jammed and fouled. That's Six home runs for certain guys is, okay, is acceptable, but when you're getting paid a lot of money and you're a power guy and you're in a power slot, you've got to produce more. With two down, Klesko takes ball two. On deck is Burroughs, who has a hit tonight. Cardinals in the bottom of the sixth will have. Walker, Pujols, and Roland. Sure the opposing staff, it seems like they bat every inning. They have a lot tonight. That's ball three. That group will be coming up for the fourth time tonight. With two out, nobody on. A run in on the home run by Giles. Here's a 3 2. And chopped right to Womack. Two hops and. That'll do it for the Padres in the sixth. Bottom half rolls in. Giles gets the Padres a run closer. It's five. With a base hit through the right side. His last time up and scored. Goes to Rippon, and that's strike one. Did you see when we had Bill Wolf on in Pittsburgh? I did not. No. We talked about your favorite show, IMAX. He's a St. Louis guy. Yeah. Uh, he was he was excited to come see the Cardinals play for real. Here's an 0-1. Ball one strike. Said you were on the show already. I was on the show already. Have you been on the show? No. We don't want to be. <laughs> Here's a 1 1. Walker chops to the right side, a race to the bag, and it's won by Neal. It's a good show. Not that I don't wouldn't want to be on it. I just leave it to you experts. Oh, yeah. You have to be able to verbally spar with. Max Keller. Yeah. You can handle him. I have faith in him. I'll set that up. No. I'll have my people talk to their people. <laughs> we'll get in touch with your people. Make it happen. Then we'll do lunch. One out for Albert, who is two for three tonight, up to 326, and a strike on the inside corner from Neal. Cardinals got only five runs on 12 hits against the starter, Lawrence. Throws hard. One ball, one strike. Yeah, he has a nice, easy motion, and then he kind of ball kind of jumps at the hitters at the last thing. He kind of lulled into a false sense of security. On one and one, Albert. That will not carry out. Giles in front of the track. Two up. Happy birthday to Emily Comas, who's 18 today, and that's from the Winties and Grandma. Happy birthday, Emily. Happy 80th birthday to Shorty Johnson, Decatur, Illinois. That's from the Cardinals and Joanne and Lynn Adolphus. Adolphson. I enjoyed him on laughing. And there's more to this story here, but uh, maybe Shorty's a nickname. With two out, nobody on. Roland takes a strike. Two out, nobody on. Roland has a hit tonight, part of the three-run rally last inning, 0-2. Lane Neal has come in and restored order for the Padres, who are trying to hang in there. If the Padres win tonight, they will be leading in the wild card race. The Cardinals don't want to let that happen. They want to help out their good friends, the Cubs. One ball, two strikes. Here's the next from the right-hander, Neal. Roland slashes it foul. Scott is hitting 324. Trying to hit 300 for the first time throughout the course of a season. The one-two pitch popped up. Neal has worked well. He got out of the fifth, has a one-two, three-sixth. And we zip right into the seventh for the Padres. Burroughs, Green, Hernandez coming up. It's five. Two, so you have an opportunity that's right out there in front of you. 425-0600. Grab a group and head on down to the park. 425-0600. Woody Williams back to the hill. 
And the first pitch is low for ball one. Sean Burroughs first up. Seventh inning already. Burroughs pops it up. Woody is rolling. Rolling is at third. Sanders is in left. One out. And Khalil Green will step to the plate. It's copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC. Al. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I got a nice email from Mary Madeline DeLeal. Son is a U.S. Marine Lieutenant stationed in Iraq. Said that last week they got one of the Cardinal games, so he's wearing his Cardinal hat. I'm sure it's under his helmet right now. That's what mom says. But 7th uh, or a Marine re Regiment. And we want to thank all of them for their service and the great job they're doing. And hope you Cardinal fans are enjoying this special season. That's outside for a ball. One ball, one strike. You get a quick look at the new member of the bullpen, Randy Flores, the lefty. Going to be another new one there tomorrow. And Keel. And Heron is back, by the way. Danny Heron's back uh, as they made a roster move. Al Reyes was optioned out. And Danny Heron was brought back today. The Reyes will be back. They tomorrow. got Heron here <laughs> to get him eligible in case they need him for the postseason roster. Which has to be set by tonight. Yeah, there's some flexibility. You can replace players, and players on the disabled list are eligible. The guys are on rehab assignments. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rick Ankeel makes that ultimate postseason roster. That would be interesting. Two balls, two strikes. I'm just anxious to see him and see him get out on the mound. He will have a new number, by the way. We all remember him wearing number 66. He has gotten rid of that. And he is wearing the former number of Steve Klein, number 49. Good. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Green with one out, base hit. Pitch was up, and Williams, when he's been in trouble tonight, has kept the ball up, and these Padres have hit it. Khalil's two out of three, and here comes Ramon Hernandez. You see why some people are very impressed with Camille Green and think that he's a legitimate candidate for the rookie of the year. Jason Bay, we've seen so much of him late. We know he definitely is one. Gotten a lot of production from their from their catchers this year, led by Hernandez. Right one. And maybe 21 22 home runs by a trio of catchers. Cardinals are looking to return the favor. They have not turned a double play all night. That's into left center field. Edmonds won't get to it. Khalil Green will head to third. Now come around and score. Into second with a double is Hernandez, and it's a 5 3 game. The Padres are not going to go quietly, and the Cardinal bullpen is going to get busy, I would imagine, here soon. He's got good speed, but good fundamental base running. Sees the ball is going to get down, and he takes off. Picks up his third base coach, never looked behind, and just comes across the plate. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Now it's Terrence Long off the bench, another former Oakland A. He bats for Neal, who went an inning and two thirds, all zeros except the strikeout. All of a sudden, the tying run is at the plate, and the bullpen is still quiet for the Cardinals. Strike one on Long, who's hitting 294 with two homers and 23 RBIs. Well, they have really stretched out their starters of late, but it is a little bit surprising that. Just one guy is stretching and not no one is throwing. Runner on at second with one out tying run at the plate pretty good pitch one ball one strike on long.
this season a 305 hitter with both of his home runs against right handed pitching. 1 1 delivery is high, 2 1. On deck is the rookie Guzman, then Loretta. We're in the seventh, the Cardinals lead 5 3. Edmonds, Renneria, Sanders will bat for the Cardinals bottom of this inning and now they will go to work in the Cardinal pen. Here's a 2-1. Long chase 1-2-2. Two two. Mr. Busy Julian Tavares is up and he will start to get loose. It looked like his hat was relatively clean. Yes. So much for Steve Klein going back to <laughs> a clean hat. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Long. Got him on the inside corner. Two out. That's a big out with the rookie Guzman coming up. Now Woody is that master when he needs to come up with a key pitch. He usually comes up with one. And breaking ball kind of cutting in on the right handed batter. A lot of times you want to elevate that ball, get it up above their hands a little bit. But that was a key pitch here, and they're going to stick with Guzman. And so far, Woody has given him a pretty good lesson. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Breaking ball in for a strike. Back door, the breaking ball there, working on both sides of the plate. Switch hitter. That should end the inning. In comes Edmonds. Out goes Renneria. It'll be Edgar, and that's it for the Padres in the seventh. They get only one. Woody Williams limits the damage. Time to stretch, Cardinals. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by the St. Louis Renaissance Grand Hotel, the official hotel of FSN Midwest. It's a right-hander, Steve Watkins. Coming in here, only appearing in his fifth ball game. Done a pretty good job at this point. Edmonds is first up. Sally Smith, congratulations. Today's merchandise winner in the Hyundai Long Drive inning sweepstakes. The Cardinals hit a home run in this seventh. Sally Smith qualifies for the Hyundai Santa Fe drawing in September. To register, visit a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Edmonds facing a guy who made his major league debut on August 21st. Six years in the minor leagues, originally drafted in the 16th round in the 98th. Free agent draft. Edmonds takes a ball. Jim has had a perfect night. That's ball two. Our SBC Yahoo DSL connection of the day brought to you by Yahoo DSL and it was Edmonds 37th of the year. Back in the Cardinals second. Two and one. Happy 26th birthday to Denny Prost. P.R.O.S.T. Happy 25th wedding anniversary to Margie and Mel Horman. Florissant Missouri. Got a better one than that. Why are you discounting 69th that? wedding anniversary? You're discounting. Well, that's, I mean, they're just newcomers to the game. A 2 1. Edmonds takes ball three. Renneria will follow. And then Sanders. Got married. <laughs> Said yes, dear. <laughs> there goes number 38. RBI number 98. And the Cardinals lead 6-3. About a perfect night. Two home runs, a walk, a base hit, and an RBI. Jim Edmonds is heating it up. Boy, you just hope these guys don't take all the votes away from each other in the MVP battle. Cool, rolling. Now Edmonds all making a statement. He's going to get where they're going to want a curtain call. 
Look at this shot. Renneria goes into deep left field. Did they go back to back at the wall? Back to back. Welcome to St. Louis, San Diego. It's seven to three. You can get a two for the price of one curtain call here in the seventh. Well, uh, these fans, and even in Pittsburgh, they're on their feet. They want curtain calls. It seemed like about five of them happened in the last series at home. Now you see the ball up in her half, and he just turns on it. Steve Watkins, the ZRA, is taking a little beating with those back to back to start here, the Cardinals' seventh. Wilma White and Mike White. They should come out together down there. The 69th wedding anniversary, and Jim Edmonds and Renteria just gave them a thrill. Sanders rips one toward the corner. That's an extra base hit. Lesko ends up on the grass, and Reggie is thinking about three, and why not? There he goes. Safe. Two homers and a triple here in the seventh. Wow. And boy, there's no nothing easing up on these guys. They're just piling it on. 15 hits. Here's Klesko. The ball gets by him as he slips. He's a divot, and that allowed Reggie to go from second to third. Darren Balsley. Balsley, the pitching coach, is out to talk to a shell shocked reliever. And that's what this club can do. Reggie knew he had to hustle as there was going to be a play made and throw just a little bit bouncing high and gets underneath the tag. Happy 80th birthday to Anna Wilson from your daughters and son-in-law and grandsons. Happy belated 13th anniversary to Larry and Missy Ellison. Hi, Derek. Get them all in, Joe. <laughs> Runner at third, nobody out. Infield is in. Matheny trying to add to a 7-3 to three lead. Homer, Homer, triple, a strike. Matheny has driven in 38. His average of 244. Hitless tonight. Strike two. We have had a lot of action in the seventh after everybody got a good stretch. And it's been good action. Ball one. Cardinals could open up their biggest lead of the night. It's going to take something from Marlon Anderson, who is going to hit for Woody Williams. Let's tell you what's happened in this inning. Jim Edmonds led off with a home run to right. And while this crowd, the Cardinal bench players, were reacting to that home run, and the crowd was hoping for a curtain call from Edmonds, Renneria took a high pitch and went over the wall and left. And Renneria. Renneria gets this reaction from Edmonds, who was ready to celebrate his own. Now he celebrates a teammate's home run to make it 7-3. to Remember that home run by Renneria puts him in double figures, too. So look at what the five, six, and seven hitters have done. Only retired twice, three home runs, been on base and scoring runs all over the place. Marlon Anderson is pinch hitting here in the seventh for Woody Williams, who has finished. In line for the win, allowed three runs on seven hits. Infield is still in. Anderson is driven in 24, and that's hammered foul on two. The numbers for Woody Williams tonight: three earned runs, no walks, six K. Consistently getting that six, seven innings from the starters. They don't walk anybody. I've noticed that. Cardinals have allowed the fewest walks in the National League, and that's a big key to their success. Anderson broke his bat, so he gets a new one. How about the fact now they have the lowest ERA in the National League? That's 
the opening weekend of the NFL season on Fox on the 12th. Including the Giants with their starting quarterback, Kurt Warner, yeah. taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. What game do you have? I have Washington hosting Tampa Bay. 0-2 pitch is low. We'll get to see Mark Brunel and Joe Gibbs with their Redskin debuts. The return of Gibbs after a 12-year layoff. Here's a 1-2. I don't know if I totally agree with this outfield alignment for Marlon Anderson. I'm going to play him like he's Tony Womack. As you see over here, the left fielder is playing close to the line. The, the center fielder is shading towards, towards uh, left. They are pitching him away, but big gap out in this way. And we've seen Marlon hit a few home runs this year. On two and two. Anderson's having a good at bat. Always push to get that extra run home so a grand slam can't tie you. Hard hit, bad break, and a line drive right, to end play. the inning. Sanders was going on contact, so the double play ends it. It's 7-3 as we go into the eighth inning. The Cardinals head to their bullpen. They'll call on to that. We welcome you back to the eighth inning. The Cardinals have to go to their bullpen. You can go to the website. Visit stlcardinals.com, the number one site for live game pitch-by-pitch -pitch coverage, MLB.tv and MLB.com. Game day audio. STLCardinals.com, where baseball is always on, and it seems like night after night, these Cardinals are always on. They're doing it again tonight. Seven runs on 15 hits, and they lead it 7-3. to three. The call to the bullpen brought to you by St. Louis Renaissance Grand Hotel, the official hotel of FSN Midwest. Julian Tavares takes over here. You see he's had a couple days off. End of last week, he pitched uh, one one pitch. How about that? On Wednesday, got the win. He got a save on Sunday. Yesterday, he enjoyed it off. This ball club just keeps on rolling along. Looking for win number 87 to go 43 games over 500. Loretta first up, hard of the order for the Padres, and a good breaking ball is in for a strike from Tavares. You and I have not had chance to discuss that whole hat incident which is really one of the more odd happenings at this ballpark all year what a play <laughs> Tavares who takes it right out of his glove flips it out of his glove without grabbing it with a bare hand gets the out that was great one up well, you see he always goes to his hat but this is a sensational play you running full speed bending over at the same time you grab the ball it's in your webbing and you flip it to your first baseman and throw a strike there too but Julian swears that he does not use pine tar there wasn't pine tar on the hat it's a combination of sweat dirt and the rosin bag and that would leave it a little sub uh, sticky substance there you're able to use the rosin bag that's that white bag that's in the back keep uh, your hands kind of dry and it gets a little tacky. He always goes to his hat. Giles hits it down into the corner. Long run for Reggie. Is he there? Yes. Two out. <laughs> Cardinals have flash some leather tonight at the Padres. Two down. That was not as easy as it had appeared. You're running into the corner here in the dead run. You know the wall's coming as you change from grass to the dirt surface. And yet Reggie made it look relatively easy. So now with two out, Phil Nevin will be the hitter. Happy birthday to Jared Sappington. Ball one. Loves the Cardinals. Cool little guy. Must be five years old. Well, he's six now. But I wish him happy birthday. 2-0. 8 to nothing. The Cubs lose at Montreal. 8 to nothing. 
Houston beat Cincinnati. Closes that gap a little bit. The only three out in the wild card. Breaking ball has Nevin bailing. It's two and one. With two out, nobody on. Nevin hitting 311, misses it by plenty, two and two. You know, I think Jeff, Michelle, Caitlin, and Austin Ole, Cardinal transplants out in Los Angeles that are here at the game tonight. You don't think they're enjoying this one? Watching the Cardinals try and beat the Padres first of a six game homestand, which will see the Padres and Dodgers come to town. The old Louis Tion delivery, the sidearm chuck from Julian Tavares, a perfect eighth. Three, bottom of the eighth, top of the order. Tony Womack takes a strike. Womack, two out of four. Ricky Stone, who was claimed off of waivers from Houston. Ricky Stone should have sent Jimmy Williams a thank you note for all of the games he got to pitch in with Houston every day this guy was in the game and if he wasn't in a game he was up getting loose you can imagine a guy wearing down after a while it has to get up and work that much looking at the media guide and I found another one of Ricky Stone's former teammates and one of your good buddies Brandon Puffer there's a ground ball to the right side good play by Loretta got in front of it one out one down Larry Walker coming up coming up after tonight's game as a Midwest sports report show you the brave customers who allowed Steve Klein to serve them lunch earlier today at Hardy's so tonight Jim Hayes reports from Rams Park where the number one pick looks like the right choice this year plus check out the highlights from around Major League Baseball that's right after this game Walker has one hit three trips tonight. Pujols next, one out, nobody on. So at least Pujols will get another at bat this evening. Cardinals have Ray King getting loose for the top of the ninth with Klesko, Burroughs, and Green, the scheduled hitters. Any ideas that anyone had of the Cardinals in a position to help out the Cubs and all that, the wild card, and not. Laying it all out there for San Diego. You can forget that. Tony La Russa has not managed in any other way than he has all year, and that is using Tavares in the eighth. He's not going to play around with it anymore in the ninth. He's going to use King. Here's a 3-1. Walker draws a one-out walk. I would imagine Doug Stanton brought this up in our truck that Al the Cardinals have to at least be a little excited to play somebody other than Cincinnati or Pittsburgh at this point in the year because for the last few weeks it seems that's all they've played. So usually even if you're a contending team you'd rather play another contender because then you guys have something to fight for you get uh, you you're trying to prove to each other the other games when you're playing a non contender like the Cubs thought they're going to go into Montreal and they're going to clean up when the, you don't win those games is when all of a sudden everything starts panicking. One ball one strike from Stone. Fans start thinking you go play a lesser opponent you're supposed to dominate when it doesn't happen. So I mean many times you're better off playing contending teams. On one and one Albert lifts it into left field back at the wall there goes number 41. And the Cardinals lead 9-3 in the eighth. Gets number 41. He has three RBIs tonight, 103 for the year, and that means another $100 from the Sunch of Automotive family for their win one for the kids charity fund. 
time the Cardinals hit a home run, they have four tonight. Two by Edmonds, one by Renneria, and now this one by Pools. Glad they got a bunch of dealerships. <laughs> Rolling with one out, nobody on, a 1-0 pitch. That's hard hit from right at Burroughs. Two out. Cardinal Baseball, a production of Bud Sports, and is an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Net. Nice round for Jim Edmonds, who's having quite a night. And those who didn't get a chance to give him a curtain call last time want him to get another standing ovation here in the eighth. for his third, but that's not deep enough, and it's not fair. Now you could say, well, I'm, I'm not trying for it. Or you can just be honest and say, yes, I am. That was a big game. <laughs> I was going to say, that was one of the best of the year. You're filled with great games. Boy, he, is, uh, is Edmonds locked in or what? Everything he hits is a bullet. Yeah, and I love it because you ask Jimmy, are you locked in? You go, oh no. <laughs> and his average to 311. 98 RBIs, 38 home runs. Even that, spoiling that pitch, still 0 2. Sometimes that's when you know a guy is. Swinging the bat well is, is how he takes a pretty good pitcher's pitch and what he can do with it, just fighting it off, staying alive. On 0 and 2, Edmonds takes the ball. Let's go back to the 1st of July and look at the numbers 23 home runs, 51 RBI. And remember how he you know, really tailed off last season. Part of it was due to injury. Cardinals were very close to trading him this offseason. I think we can look back and say that was one of the best moves in not doing so. One of the reasons they didn't trade him was because of the shoulder surgery which he had, which took him off the market. And he has been nothing short of spectacular for the Cardinals this year. He is almost there knocking on the door of 40 and 100 himself 38 home runs 98 RBIs and that all this offensive talk can scratch the surface with what he brings to this team defensively making those catches and for my money even more importantly throwing those one hop strikes to the plate right. 10 assists this year and many times they've been at home plate a year ago. 34 home runs. Pretty good numbers, but it was all the first half. Still a full count. No matter what he does in this at bat, it's a good one. Thirty thousand eight hundred sixteen at the park tonight, and they again will leave happy. Be a mistake inside. Ball four, a two out walk. Second walk of the inning. People say, forget league MVP, who's the team MVP for the Cardinals? And that old saying, if you took a certain guy out of the lineup, would that team win? I don't think the Cardinals have that guy because if you took any one guy out of this lineup, Feel like five or six others could drive this team into first place. Uh, and you look at uh, the acquisition of Larry Walker. You know the Cardinals trying to go get pitching. The guys that would you know were not available to be that kind of guy to get you over the hump. So they said, well, let's go and get another quality bat to add to this outstanding offense. There's a strike from Stone. And Walt did a pretty good job at getting Walker. Yeah. And psychologically, that told a lot to this team that 
The yep. front office ownership was committed to giving you whatever you need. And they got a lot. What do you think the reaction was from the other general managers, not only in the Central Division, but around the National League when the news was out the Cardinals got Larry Walker? Well, I talked to a couple uh, representatives of different ball clubs and, and one general manager, and they said, well, we, you know, we could have had him, but, uh, you know, we could have made the deal, but we thought it was too expensive next year. That's into shallow left, and that will end the inning. This crowd has had some fun all night long. The Cardinals got out in front of the second. They have maintained their lead. They've added to it as we've gone. Now have their biggest lead. Ninth inning. Nine three single. Oh, hello. Home run, home run, home run. In fact, two for the guy on the left panel. Jim Edmonds has gone deep twice. Renneria and then Albert Pujols capped it for a 9-3 score as we go into the ninth inning. And this crowd has loved it all night. Now they hope for three quick and easy ones from Ray King and see ya. They had uh, Monday off three games in a row. Would have been a good time to maybe see uh, Flores pitch. I think that little blast by Albert Pujols came quickly and I think if this if going into the eighth inning, it was 9-3. Maybe, but I think this points to what we've talked about all night long as Klesko goes after the first pitch, one out. Tony LaRus is not letting up. He went to Devaris, now King, one out in the ninth. Brent Stover, with a preview of what's coming up. Thanks, guys. Right after the game on the Bush Light Midwest Sports Report, you get the best cards post-game coverage in town. Player interviews, LaRusse alive, and your phone calls for Jeff Gordon at 1-888-RING-FOX, plus the latest on Orlando Pace. Now back to Joe and Al. One out. Here's Rich Aurelia. Real good player for a long time for the San Francisco Giants. Signed on with Seattle. Didn't hit. They let him go, and he's hitting 302 with the Padres. I have a feeling this guy will resurface next year with some club and really help some team out. He's a good player. Yeah, sometimes uh, you go to a change of scenery, you don't get off to that good start, and things snowball. Did it snowball at Yankee Stadium? Tonight? Oh, it snowballed the Yankee Stadium. The Yankees lost at home tonight by the largest margin in their history 22 to nothing. That's amazing. 22 to nothing. They George are slip sliding away. George is, is beside himself. He's saying, who can we get in the next few hours that we can have available for the postseason? Randy? Get Randy Where's Johnson? Randy Johnson? <laughs> well, they're in trouble. I think Randy's pitching tonight. One ball, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Yes, he is. Aurelia's gone, two down. Our play of the game brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. This crowd applauded the defense of Freddie Guzman in right center field. Great diving catch to Rob Matheny of a hit early on. We're used to seeing that sort of thing from Edmonds. Now with two out, nobody on. Here is Khalil Green, ball one. Two for three, one of the bright spots. And two of the seven hits for the Padres. It's going to be a two and a half hour game by the end of it. Even less. One bounce to Roland. Cardinals win another. 72 and 59 are the Padres. 87 and 44 are the Cardinals. They just keep on rolling. 9-3 is the final. Outstanding pitching from Williams, who has 10 wins. Tavares and King with a perfect ninth. We're coming right back. Midwest Sports Report. Coming up, Dan and Al, I'm Joe. So long.